Hey, this is Pastor Pete with a new series called, What Do You Want? 11 times in scripture it says, ask for what you want and it should be given unto you. More people know what they don't want than what they do want. And today I want to continue on with the fifth and final reason of why people don't know what they want. And it's this, number five. You don't know what you want because you don't know who you are. Now, to be honest, it would seem like everybody should know who they are. My name's Peter, that's who I am. Years ago, I was in the mountains in Scotland and I felt God really uh, impressed a question upon my heart that made me start to wonder what the answer would be. And the question was, who are you? And I thought, well, that's simple. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a businessman, I'm a musician, I'm an author, I'm all these different things. But after a while, I realized that I was measuring myself by what I did. Everything was based on the things that I was doing, not necessarily who I was. Because here's a, a difficult question for you. If you couldn't do these things that you've just described yourself by, who would you be? You see, sometimes what we do is we're so defined by what we can do more than who we are, more than that who God thinks we are. In Mark chapter one, when Jesus was about to be baptized, it says that a voice from heaven spoke and everyone around heard it. And that voice basically said this, it said, you are my son or this is my son whom I love. In you, I am well pleased. Now, I heard this from someone else, but I'm gonna repeat it. And there was three affirmations in that very, voice from heaven. And the three affirmations were acceptance, affection, and approval. Let me quickly go over them. The first one was this, acceptance. Everybody wants to belong. Everyone wants to belong to something, to a club, to a group of people, to a gang even. But the best place to be accepted is in your family. And of course, in the family of God. You see, when you're accepted, you feel like you belong. You have your parents' name, you have their looks, you have their, their culture, you have their, their ways. You're accepted because you're just like them. And it gives you a much deeper sense of meaning to life. You see, people who don't know where they belong or if they feel rejected, they often have this question where they don't know who they are. Who am I? Well, God was giving an acceptance to his son, Jesus. The second affirmation that was in that voice was affection. And affection is so powerful, right? We see it with children, they love to be hugged, they love to be embraced. And if you listen to all the songs in the charts, they're all about love and how much as humans, we just desire so deeply to have this love. Affection is so, so, so important because it makes your heart whole. The last one is this. The last affirmation is approval. When God said in him, in you, Jesus, I am well pleased. He's basically saying that I approve of who you are. Now, wait a second. This is the one thing that we actually have to show approval to God for whatever it is that we have done. You see, it requires a response. It requires an action on our behalf. What is that? It requires obedience. Jesus was accepted, was, uh, sorry, was approved by God because of his obedience. Years ago, I uh, used to coach my son's soccer team and little Johnny on the team, would I would tell him to stand on this, this position and Tommy, I would tell him to stand in that position and all the other teams, all the other players on the team were told to stay in their positions because it's a game where you have to control your position on the field. But little Johnny decided he wanted to just chase the ball wherever it was and I would say, Johnny, stay in your position. And when he didn't stay in his position, we lost a goal. In fact, we lost the game. And I'll never forget his mother all the way through kept shouting, way to go, Johnny, way to go, way to go. And she was applauding him. And I'm like, way to go, Johnny. Johnny won't do what he's told and we're losing the game because he won't be obedient to the coach and be told to just do what he's been told to do. After a while, I realized that what his mother was giving him was acceptance and affection. She was building him up. She was saying, it doesn't matter that you failed, I still love you. Whereas as a coach, I wanted to approve of his ability to follow instructions. 
But these three affirmations are so important in our lives because it helps us to be able to go towards the things and have the confidence to be able to go towards the things that we actually want in our lives. You see, you have to accept that you are loved by God, but you have to respond to the conviction that God has put in your heart to be obedient to Him. And the more that you do those things, the more you'll find the identity of who God has called you to be and what He's designed you to be. You are way greater than what you think that you are. You're more capable of what you think you are. You're not as pure or perfect as you think you are, maybe sometimes, but God has made you for greater things. Identity determines what we chase in our lives. Look at the serpent in Genesis chapter 2. The Genesis chapter 2, the serpent basically questioned who Adam and Eve was. He basically put them in a position to question whether they really were loved by God, were they really lovable. And so therefore it changed their mind to go after the things that they shouldn't have. You see, your identity determines what you chase after. And if you don't know who you are in Christ, if you don't know who you are in God, then you're always going to struggle with going after the right things. If you'd like to know more about this, I want to encourage you to get a hold of my book. I wrote a book called, What Do You Want? We love you guys. Oh, by the way, you can get it in the description. Click the link on the description and it is on Amazon. We love you guys.